So it has appeared that Apple is actually going to be releasing over-the-ear headphones and this is not actually too surprising because if you look at Apple as a company, Apple as a company is known to make headphones. Of course, they have the AirPods line, which they've had for a little while now. And then on top of that, they did buy out Beats, the company that does make uh, headphones. So they're pretty used to making headphones by now. So it's not really all too surprising that their next step or their next iteration of the headphone, of course, was going to be some over-the-ear headphones that actually go over the ear, ear like any other headphones. Now the question is, when are these actually going to come out on the market? Because it looks like there is no official release date for this product, but it looks like it is very real because there is some documentary on the internet that actually show these uh, things yet. We don't have a release date for these things. On top of that, we also don't know uh, what these are exactly going to look like and uh, things like that. One thing is pretty interesting with this product alone. If you look at the article, it does say that it is leaked with iOS 14. So maybe it'll arrive uh, sometime uh, around maybe September when the new iOS 14 does arrive. I mean, it would actually make sense just because, well, they want to release it around the time they release some new products. And to get people super excited about a product like this, they would obviously want to release it around the time the iPhone launches. So I can actually uh, see that. And I actually get why they would actually... Uh, want to do that now here's what the pictures look look like of course these aren't like actual like leaked photos of the actual of the actual headphones they're pretty much more like renders what people think might actually look like it looks like we might have multiple SKUs of this product we might have like different very different uh, colors right out the gate and they did say potentially we might be getting uh, things like the Apple's own uh, chipset in here so basically you can easily pair it to your uh, smartphone if you want to pair it easily to like your iPhone it'll be uh, very easy to do that and then also with this uh, product I do believe I do think they may add some features uh, which would make it easy for you to take off the headphones and the music pauses you put on the headphones and the music would uh, start playing overall i am actually very interested to see what apple would actually do with over-the-ear headphones since you guys know over-the-ear headphones have been out for years now there's so many companies making these over-the-ear headphones are these over-the-ear headphones going to be just standard over-the-ear headphones or are they going to add things like a and C active noise canceling because if they add active noise canceling to this pair it would make it amazing but they could make these just standard headphones with maybe a little bit of features and then maybe make a new set down the road like maybe whatever they want to call them like the pro version of this actual product because it would make sense and I do get why they would want to have multiple uh, versions of this product to get people to rebuy the headphones who already bought the headphones but yeah it looks like these are going to be very interesting the only thing i can see with these headphones is they're going to be for a very different demographic who who aren't really uh looking to buy the uh, airpods and maybe people who are interested in the airpods may look at this option as well it's very interesting or very uh I'm very, I'm very interested, excuse me, to see what type of demographic that Apple is trying to really market these to. Are they trying to market these to more like audiophiles, which is probably not the case, of course. Their headphones don't have like amazing sound, like the best sound you can possibly humanly get. But it's just very interesting to see these products and who they're marketed for, how these are going to look when they come out. And it does make sense that they would actually want to release something like this as well, because you do have to realize as well Apple, it always seems like from year to year, a lot of their products start to not sell as well. Like for instance, the, it's already proven that the decline of smartphones have been uh, declining for quite some time now. I mean, what can you do to smartphones to really make them stand out from the crowd since smartphones have been going on for many years? And what type of features can really appeal to people who already have current smartphones, which are absolutely amazing. So it's hard to like get people invested in the next iPhone when they already have a perfectly good working iPhone. So Apple needs to come up and try to find like different streams of revenue that would actually get people to buy other Apple products. And of course, the next step here alongside what they already do would be more headphones because like I said, they already make headphones. So it'd be easy for them to actually make just more head headphones and things like that. So it's very interesting that they're going to potentially be making uh, over the ear headphones uh, from Apple. And I'm actually very interested to see uh, what this actually includes in terms of features, in terms of the price. Of course, the price is going to be the, the make it or break it 
for this product specifically? Are they gonna price it around some other premium headphones? Are they gonna undercut the competition and actually make it a little bit cheaper than some of the uh, than some of the uh, products out there on the market? You do have to realize, of course, Apple does own Beats, like I said, and since Apple owned Beats, where would they actually place this and what features would they actually put in this actual headphone? And are they gonna be also kind of like a variation of the Beats line since technically they already do make over-the-ear headphones or head headphones like this in general with the uh, Beats products. But yeah, overall, just uh, a very interesting product. And I can, I actually kind of can't wait for this product to be announced because it is kind of cool to see what they would actually do with a, with a, with a uh, product like this that's already been on the market for so long and so many, uh, decades now it's just very interesting to take an old concept and try to make it make it your own so yeah very interesting to say the least the next one is going to be about uh 5g because we do have an article about 5g and this one is actually relatively uh interesting it looks like uh canada is going to be getting its first uh 5g networks and the 5G networks are going to be from, I think, Rogers. If you're uh, familiar with Canada, they are going to be getting their uh, first 5G uh, networks, which for a lot of people has to be excited, exciting. But don't get too excited about the uh, rollout of 5G in Canada if you're up there uh, in Canada because, uh, of course, there is a lot of limitations to 5G. And then one of the biggest problems with 5G, at least in right now, is the fact that 5G... Uh, you can't get 5G easily even if you're like by a tower a lot of times you don't get uh, the full speed of 5G a lot of times you do get drops with 5G it's already proven that 5G is just not that stable like I said don't get too, your hopes up too much about it and most likely most of you guys probably don't even have a 5G compatible phone because you either have an old phone that doesn't support 5G or you bought a brand new phone but it still doesn't support 5G because most of the phones you have to pay like a premium to get 5G 5G actually in the phone. It's considered an extra feature so it doesn't come standard in smartphones yet because of course when technology gets cheaper, when things start to become much more bigger and things like that, of course, it'll become a standard that every phone will have 5G but for right now you have to pay extra for 5G and I can see why you wouldn't want to pay for 5G because it does cost extra on your smartphone which not a lot of smartphones actually have 5G either. Like for instance, the iPhones, the iPhones don't have 5G and you can't buy any SKU of the the uh, iPhone at the current moment with 5G capability. I think some of the uh, only phones on the market to actually support 5G I do know is Samsung. Samsung at the very moment does support 5G again. It is going to be a extra feature and you can only buy it on like some of their much more expensive uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy phones which is kind of uh, unfortunate but again a lot of uh, different uh, cell companies actually don't have uh, 5G capability yet, so it's not really that big a deal, but yeah, it is, I guess it is nice to see technology actually uh, move into the right direction, and of course, with 5G speeds, you do get speeds extremely fast if you can get them. You can get speeds over 1 gig, which 4G can't even hit anywhere near uh, 1 gig speeds, which is actually uh, very nice. I just wish 5G was more reliable. I'm not really concerned too much about the speed. The speed is very nice. I know the speed can fluctuate really heavy on, on current 5G networks, but I just really, really want it to be much more secure or much more stable 5G because it sucks if you're just walking around and all of a sudden your 5G cuts back to like 4G technology or maybe uh, goes back up to 5G overall it's just not a really great experience for the consumer and the other thing that really does suck about 5G at least from some carriers you have to pay actually an extra fee to use a 5G connection I'm not too sure on uh, Canada's situation with Rogers because I'm not really too familiar with uh, how they do their uh, how they do their service but yes in, in some instances you do have to pay extra for 5g on top of you buying a phone made for 5g and all these different circumstances come out that right now in 2020 5g is just really a niche thing and on top of uh, 5g really being a uh, niche thing the fact that 5g is still so new that not a lot of people get to experience it and it's not really that big a deal but it is nice that all these companies i guess are just really getting ready for the rollout of 5g and that's where the market is headed it's headed towards 5g and i will admit it is about time to get something more than uh, 4g speeds because i am an avid smartphone user and i can say i do a lot of heavy tasks on my uh, smartphone and 4g connection and a lot of times just is not great depending on how far you are away 
away from the actual tower. Downloading stuff is still not instant on 4G. I can't wait to see actually 5G in action and see how blazingly fast is a 5G. I remember when 4G was just being announced, a lot of companies were making a big deal about, oh, you can download stuff blazingly fast, but turns out it's not actually that fast of a connection. Of course, it is faster than things like 3G and 2G connection, but overall, it's not the fastest thing in the world, and there's already in-home Wi-Fi that has faster speeds than that, so I am glad to see uh, them advance uh, smartphone technology in the right direction, and a lot of people have to rely on their internet connection on like their, their smartphones all the time for business purposes and things like that, so I am glad that 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 uh, in the near future 5G should be much more of a common thing and it should be much more stable but it's kind of cool that now more and more companies are starting to roll out uh, 5G and here's all the information uh, on uh, 5G it looks like also it looks like they're offering 5G for basically free on the Rogers uh, network on uh, in Canada but there is actually a clause because it says after uh, March 6, 2021, you will have to pay a $15 surge, surge charge, basically an extra fee to actually access uh, actually access uh, 5G. And that's something that I never really liked about all these cell companies as well. It is uh, kind of a hassle that you can't get all these extra fees depending on what you're doing on your smartphone, of course, and depending on if you go over your data cap, if you want to get like a hotspot. If now, if you want to get 5G, they're kind of trying to make you pay for all this, all these features. That's a way that all these smartphone or all these uh, cellular carriers really do gouge their customers by nickeling and diming all their customers by uh, enticing you with all these features. But hold on, you have to pay for all these uh, extra features. It always seems like, which is kind of annoying in the end. But I guess that's just the way the world works, and that's a way to get people to spend extra money by trying to entice them to get. Oh, you want faster speed? 5G. Pay for this. You want more data? To pay for this you want you want a uh, a wireless hotspot you got to pay for that feature you just have to pay for all these features and it does kind of suck i can see why uh smartphones all are uh, why uh, owning it yeah owning a smartphone can actually be pretty expensive uh in the uh, long run now the next one is actually about one of the most rarest items out there on the actual market the item i'm actually talking about is actually the nintendo playstation if you don't know anything about uh gaming there was supposed to be a partnership with Nintendo and PlayStation and they were actually supposed to make their own dedicated console so there wasn't actually supposed to be a, a PlayStation console and then a Nintendo console they were supposed to shake hands and pretty much be one console called the Nintendo PlayStation and there's even a prototype of the Nintendo PlayStation so it's a real thing it wasn't just a concept they actually even took it a little bit farther by actually making a, a game console that was actually called the Nintendo PlayStation that's how serious the partnership between Nintendo and Sony was actually way back in the day and and the prototype for this thing just sold on the market and it sold pretty well but honestly for as rare as this is I agree with a lot of people I, I'm surprised it didn't sell close to, more closer to like a million dollars because this thing is like one of a kind it's gaming history at its finest it's just overall a very unique item I just don't understand why it only hit the price it did so the price for this thing uh, I think at auction or whatever sold for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars three hundred sixty dollars dollars is no uh, chump change it's actually a uh, very expensive for what it is taking in consideration it's something that you can't actually use in real life it's more of just like a prototype and I don't know if they actually released games for it. it looks like you can play games on it actually according to this picture I think these are either guys who sold it or the guys who bought the system I want to say but either way it is pretty interesting to see the Nintendo PlayStation sell for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars I mean the only person that would be willing to pay something like that for such a rare item would definitely be a collector because like I said this thing's just too just thing just doesn't really have any practicality for it on top of that it's just too expensive and it's actually good that these things go for such an expensive price because that most likely means that it's not going to end up in a uh, the wrong hands it's not like gonna end up in somebody who's just gonna maybe destroy it or trash it or do something stupid with it most likely they're gonna really either use it like in this picture or most likely they're probably gonna put it in like a museum or like put it in their own personal collection to cherish for pretty much ever so I am glad it's probably going to the uh, right owners and yeah it's pretty interesting to see this thing actually finally sell because who would have thought this thing would have sold as well because most likely the owner of this thing 
probably doesn't want to sell it. I don't know who actually uh, owned the device. Yes, it was for a it was for a bid actually, which they ended up having to pay three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Which I think the bid they won for three hundred thousand. Either way, it was no uh, small fee that they actually had to pay for the uh, Nintendo PlayStation uh, console, which is very interesting. Honestly. I would actually be pretty proud to actually own something like this because this is one of a kind item. You don't see this all the time and nor the, will this probably come up to market all the time as well. Usually when an owner owns this thing, they own it for practically their whole life because there is no reason to sell it because it is so rare. It is so unique. It is like owning a part of gaming history. It kind of feels like you live in gaming when you own something this rare. It is it is kind of cool. So props to the person who actually bought the uh, Nintendo PlayStation. I actually really think it is a very uh, cool console. And honestly, I don't know why they're playing it in this in this picture or showing it actually working. Because honestly, I would be too scared to actually uh, turn this thing on. Because I feel like if I turn this thing on, as old as it is, it might erupt into a, a ball of flames. And it might be broken. And of course, the value of this thing would immediately go down once this thing's broken. So honestly, I would probably just put it in a case or put it somewhere. And pretty much just call it a day. Because it is kind of too risky to uh, actually be using this thing. But yeah, there's the... Uh, the news it sold for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars which is still amazing but honestly i thought it would have at least sold a little bit more higher than three hundred and sixty thousand dollars now the next one on the list is going to be more about battle royales i know a lot of you guys are probably tired of hearing about battle royales battle royales run the world of video games and they're n nothing new and we've had battle royales for quite some time and of course a lot of people still play apex legends Fortnite and all these other ones and a lot of people are just tired of hearing about these battle royale games for me personally I am kind of tired about hearing hearing them too but there is more information about battle royales and this one's actually a pretty interesting because we are going to be getting a brand new battle royale it's nothing too crazy but it is very interesting and I'm going to explain why this is interesting so uh the people over at Call of Duty I don't know which Call of Duty uh dev devs are actually working on the next battle royale but they are working on the next uh, call of duty battle royale and i probably wouldn't actually cover this news if they were just making a battle royale and putting it into uh, the next call of duty uh, call of duty uh, warfare i do believe or call of duty modern warfare yeah call of duty modern warfare the one that's uh, currently out on the market that's pretty much a, a reboot of the original uh modern warfare back from uh, 2007 it wouldn't be all too interesting but the thing that makes this uh super interesting for every single person is the fact that check this out yes it's going to be free and it's going to be just a standalone game as well so kind of like fortnite or kind of like uh for instance uh Apex Legends, you guys know how those games are. They're a standalone game. And I'm actually very happy about this because I never actually thought the Call of Duty uh, devs would actually want to release this as a, a standalone game. But I guess they see the monetary value of having a Battle Royale game be a standard game. Because look at games like Fortnite and possibly Apex Legends. They're probably racking in millions of dollars. And since they're racking in like millions of dollars, it really does make sense to be a... Uh, releasing Call of Duty Warzone as a uh, standalone game. Now, we don't actually have a release date for this game, but it should be uh, coming out soon. And I am actually glad they are actually continuing uh, their Battle Royale from uh, Black Ops 4. Black Ops 4 was the first Call of Duty, of course, to actually implement uh, implement Battle Royale into uh, Call of Duty. And I always wondered what was going to happen. Were they going to implement a new one in uh, the Modern Warfare reboot, were they not going to re reboot one? How were they actually going to handle it? Or were they going to take the Black Ops 4 one and just strip it out and make it its own game? Or what was the uh, a case for uh, Battle Royale for Call of Duty? But it looks like we have our answer here. And it is nice. It's going to be free for every sing single person. Because like I said, it is going to be a standalone game. You're, you're going to be able to download probably on PC, uh, PS4, and Xbox One when this comes out. Apparently from this article, it does say that it should be coming out fairly relatively soon they may even announce it as early as today the day that i'm actually recording this but don't get your hopes up if that's not true but it should be coming out 
relatively soon. Honestly, I'm definitely going to try this out because, of course, Call of Duty has some of the best gun gameplay in a, in a video game altogether. And honestly, if you're playing games like Apex Legends, which this game is going to be really close to Apex Legends just because Apex Legends is a game that is a first-person uh, shooter and, and Call of Duty is a first-person shooter as well with uh, guns and they're both very similar. I would highly recommend uh, checking this game out. And I actually always wanted to play the Battle Royale on uh, bat, uh, on Black Ops 4. But the thing is with me, I just never really got around to playing Black Ops 4 uh, Battle Royale. But now that they're finally releasing this as a standalone game, yeah, I'm going to be uh, pretty excited about this. Honestly, also, I don't know... Uh, how much microtransactions are going to be in the game because of course you have to consider that this is going to be a free to play game and they have to make money off it some way so of course there's going to be some microtransactions and in the past uh, some of these companies have been very sketchy especially with the Call of Duty franchise with uh, microtransactions so we'll have to see and wait how the microtransactions are going to be handled uh, in this game and how long are they actually going to be supporting this game I'm assuming if this game's a standalone game outside of the Call of Duty series as its own game. I'm assuming that they're going to be supporting this for uh, quite some time. And honestly, I never understood why in the first place they would want to lock their game to like Black Ops 4 and put a Battle Royale on that game when you guys know Call of Duty's only last a year and then after a year they make a brand new game and things like that. They should have just came out the gate and released it uh, standalone. And then once they released it standalone, it, they could have just kept updating it because these are kind of games where you never actually need to make a brand new uh, Battle Royale because once you make it, you can just keep making seasons with new guns, new equipment, just overall just new things to where there's no need to make a brand new game. That's why you never see a new game from Fortnite. Still the same game you've had since 2017. Same thing with Apex Legends. They just add new things and new maps to the game and that's how they do it. Will this game revolutionize the uh, Battle Royale? actual uh actual like uh like genre of video games honestly i don't think it'll change the genre of video games by any stretch of the imagination i really do think that this game is still going to be a standard battle royale but just the fact that it is does have the call of duty name across it a lot of people are going to want to play it because it'll probably have slightly better gun gameplay than something like apex legends and things like this because it's made by a really big developer who's been making a uh, first person shooters for practically ever so it makes sense that they have a lot of uh they have a lot of uh, knowledge behind this and it may just be an actual better version of what we got in uh black ops 4 with their uh battle royale in that game but overall i'm actually pretty excited about this and i actually can't wait for this to uh, come out because when this comes out i will actually be uh playing this game one thing to note really quickly about this is if you did actually uh own i think one of the previous call of duties i think the last call of duty you will actually be getting some like gun skins and some perks for 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 uh, actually uh, buying the last call of duty but again you don't have to actually buy the, the the current call of duty to actually play this game again it will be a free to play standalone game in the store when this game announces and i think that's actually the right direction to actually take your battle royale game since there's such a such an easy genre to actually make a free to play game and a lot of people want to check these out and on top of that they're very good for multiplayer sessions and good for your friends and good for buddies and good to play with just different people People. So props to Call of Duty for actually doing the right thing. At first when I heard about this like a month ago, I thought for some reason it was actually going to be not a standalone game. I thought it was actually going to be part of uh, the Modern Warfare reboot that came out last year. But lo and behold, it's actually not. So yeah, very interesting news and it gives us one more free-to-play game. It always also does seem like free-to-play games are getting better and better and better as the uh, years goes on with gaming and that's nice you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money to play quality gaming anymore the next one is actually about a uh, leaked phone because we do have uh, information on an upcoming uh, leaked phone i know more leaked phones but like i said i have to cover them it's part of my uh job here on youtube to cover uh smartphones and things like that so the next smartphone we actually have leaked right now is actually the images of the uh, pixel 4a the pixel 4a does look like it is actually going to be a real thing just like last year you guys know they made the pixel 3 and then they made the pixel 3a which was a budget version of the original pixel 3 of course it had overall it was just a budget budget friendly option of the uh, pixel 3 but what made the pixel 3 and 3 axl su such good phones was the fact that they carried over their uh, smartphone uh, 
their smartphone cameras from the Pixel 3 line and everybody was absolutely blown away by the fact that it was a very cheap phone for like $400 that could actually give you amazing uh, pictures and in some case it was even beating out things like Apple, Samsung, all the big manufacturers because for a while uh, for a while, the Pixel phones had some of the best cameras or, or the best cameras on smartphones and everyone admitted it, how great their camera was. But now looking at the Pixel 4 scenario, the Pixel 4 is kind of like in a weird scenario. Most people have mixed feelings on the Pixel 4. It didn't really blow us away with the cameras. Uh, the performance was okay. There's just a lot of things that were kind of iffy on the uh, Pixel 4 line. But it is cool, I guess, they are continuing their, their uh, trend and they are gonna be uh, making a budget-friendly version of the Pixel 4. And the budget-friendly option of the Pixel 4, of course, is gonna be the Pixel 4a. Here's the leaked rumors, or here's the leaked pictures of the uh, Pixel 4a. Uh, right here, you can see it already has a case thrown on it. You can see it's gonna share the same camera as the Pixel 4, wh whether you love it or whether you hate it, that's the reality. It's pretty much gonna have less specs than the uh, current uh, Pixel 4. Overall, it's still gonna be a very solid phone for a budget-friendly phone because let's face it, smartphones keep getting more expensive, especially if you wanna buy buy one of those premium devices. So it is nice that uh, it is nice that Google is still going to be making a friendly option of their uh, premium smartphone line, the Pixel 4, so that's nice. One thing someone did say is compared to the, uh, let me see if I can bring up the image here. If you see the pic, if you see the image of the uh, Pixel 4a, which is, th this is the leaked image of the Pixel 4a, you can see it does look a little bit cleaner than what, uh, Google did last year with the Pixel uh, 3a, so I'm actually pretty glad about this. This one does look a little bit more premium for a uh, budget-friendly uh, smartphone. I love the fact that the camera, camera, the whole punch out for the camera is on the left side. It's not too atrocious. I love that it doesn't really look like it has a bezel. Overall, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good phone. Of course, we'll have to wait and see until this phone comes out. Don't expect it to be the fastest phone on the market by any stretch of the imagination. It's not going to be getting any killer performance. It's just going to be a pretty decent phone. Of course, you're going to have to uh, substitute a lot of things. It's going to, you're going to have to make, excuse me, a lot of different compromises on this phone to be 100% sure. But for the average consumer, I think a lot of people will be happy with something like the Google Pixel uh, 4a when this actually releases. Now the question is, are they going to be releasing a 4a small version and a 4a XL to have a budget friendly, uh, bigger version of this phone? Most likely I can actually see that actually, uh, being a thing but right now we only have one of the phones leaked the 4a not the 4a xl if the 4a xl is even a thing but it's just very interesting to see that all these big big brand companies are starting to realize that there is actually a reason to actually get into the uh budget friendly uh, smartphone market because there are a lot of good smartphones at that like sub 500 price or around $500 so it is nice to get into that market since not everybody on the market of course wants to spend like somewhere upwards of like a thousand dollars to buy a smartphone since they practically do all the same stuff and some people need to talk so they want a fairly good smartphone so I am glad about that and then of course we do have more uh, information about how uh, Apple is pretty much making an iPhone SE 2 which is pretty much the successor to the original iPhone SE and that one's going to be super cheap I think like $399 or something crazy like that very cheap for an iPhone so it makes sense that they would want to continue this line and I'm not 100% too surprised that they would continue on the trend by making a cheaper option one thing I am very uh one thing I am still very uh interested or I'm very curious about is why does uh Google waits so long after the release of the uh, the, uh, the regular Google Pixels to actually release their budget-friendly options. Because usually, what hap happens is with a lot of these with a lot of these uh, top-tier smartphone brands like Samsung or Apple, they usually release a lot of their uh, budget-friendly options at the same time they release like their uh, regular smartphone line. So it is very interesting that their marketing plan is to not release it alongside their regular smartphones. But I guess it makes sense not to release it with their premium uh, Google Pixels because maybe their theory is well, we don't actually want to. Uh, we don't want to actually make it too complicated for the consumer, which the consumer already has a lot of options. And if we throw in these 4A, 
four A phones into the mix, we might actually get the consumers actually confused into what actually smartphone that we actually have, and we don't want to give them too many choices, and we want to try to make them buy the current one that's on the market. Maybe that's how they try to have a budget-friendly option, and then they also try to have a premium uh, smartphone by releasing them at different times of the year. It really does seem like they're like really practically only only one of the few uh, smartphone makers that actually make smartphones that actually try that tactic instead of releasing it with their other uh, premium smartphones at launch they release it months later uh, as, as, its, as its own standalone phone but I guess actually Samsung did kind of do that I think this year with the Samsung S10 Lite and uh, I think yeah the S10 Lights I do believe which they did do that which is kind of weird because it has the S10 name and it was released about a year after the original S10 so it didn't actually make sense to me at all considering the S20s were already around the corner but yes overall still uh, very interesting. The only downside to this phone is you're not going to be getting the same camera performance you did uh, last year with the 3As because uh, the cameras on the uh, Pixel 4s are just a, a mixed bag. Still a really good smartphone camera without a doubt and it will be beating other options probably around the same price point if you were to buy another smartphone around the price the 4a is going to launch at so yeah and it looks like also one of the saving graces for this phone if you were to pick up this phone now that i actually think about it is one of the saving graces for this phone is even though it is going to be a budget friendly option and you're not going to be getting all the the nice little bells and whistles you would be getting on a much more premium smartphone is the fact that you will actually be getting a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and you guys know 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks are not a thing anymore headphone jacks are gone of the gone of the dodo bird so yeah it's nice that you do get that it's still a thing i guess that uh, Google's like, well, if you're going to get a budget-friendly smartphone option, we might as well just give you a free headphone jack. There's no point of cutting it, and it might make people actually want to buy this phone because it has a actual headphone jack on it, which is actually very interesting. Overall, my feelings and thoughts of this are just, it's going to be a pretty much a good phone for, for the money. Just keep your expectations low because you know what you're paying for when you pay for something like the Pixel uh, 4a. Now, I actually have one more article for you guys that I actually want to cover. Uh, for today it's actually about the redesign of Spotify because it looks like Spotify is actually getting a redesign and me as a consumer of Spotify this actually makes me uh, super excited and super happy that they're actually trying to uh, add new features or add add new uh, add new layouts to uh, Spotify to actually make it much more uh, user friendly this is nothing actually too crazy but if you look at the article here it does say Spotify's new home screen helps you get back to favorites basically they're gonna add a whole bunch of new stuff that you currently listen to on your home screen when you open up uh, open up uh, Spotify and I actually think that's a really good equality of life thing just because it makes our day much more easier it's much more easier to sign in to Spotify and have everything right there waiting for you right when you actually open up Spotify you don't have to like dig through a lot of sub menu dig through a lot of text and things like that I always love it when these companies are forward thinking and Spotify is thinking they want to make Spotify as best as possible for the users and they want to make sure it's easy to actually uh, use Spotify because they also probably realize as a company a lot of people use Spotify from day to day and they probably opened it up a lot during throughout their day so they want to make sure that it's easy for a lot of different people to actually just open up Spotify listen to whatever they want and then back out of Spotify they want to make it as seamless as possible it looks like they're rolling this uh, refreshed uh, home screen out to Android and iOS. It's only going to be for the mobile only. It's not going to be for like the desktop application. It is going to be for mobile only, but I am very nice, glad about that. Again, it is rolling out, so you may not get the brand new uh, home screen on your Spotify application just yet. You may need to check for updates, or it may just automatically roll out if you have Spotify on your phone. And like I said, for me as a consumer and as, as much as I use Spotify, it being my pretty much my main primary source of listening to music, I am glad they're trying to just make it much more easier for the uh, consumer and for people who actually use Spotify so they don't have to like waste their time being in this application because there's a lot of times you would think a lot of these different companies out there would be forward thinking and really want to make these uh, applications or these websites really uh, user friendly, but a lot of times they actually take a step back and they make it too complicated complicated to actually use some of their features and they just make it overall just a hassle but it looks like Spotify is going in 
the right direction and they're really trying to make it as user friendly as possible and they're really trying to get people to actually stay in Spotify more by actually having all these uh, nice features like this new feature of this new home screen that'll help you find everything that you currently listen to on the home screen every time you sign on and I'm actually a very big fan of that and I can't wait until this feature actually rolls out. I know I'm gushing over something that's not really a big deal. It's just like a UI implementation, but I do like these little UI implementations to apps, to websites, to user interface that makes our life a little bit easier uh, in the long run. And yes, that's pretty much going to do it for today's episode. Anyway, guys, this is Wayne from My Tech News signing out.